TAEF Chairman Xiao, former Deputy Prime Minister Fang Tep, former Deputy Prime Minister Peters, distinguished guests from around the world, good afternoon. Thank you all for attending the sixth Yusan Forum. I hope that you will also be able to find some time to engage with Taiwan's friendly and vibrant people while you are here. The COVID-19 pandemic is now receding, and many countries are relaxing pandemic restrictions, preparing for a new post-pandemic lifestyle. I sincerely hope that all the international leaders, experts, and scholars here today will use the Yusan Forum as a platform for in-depth exchanges on important current issues such as regional economic recovery, supply chain restructuring and resilience, good global governance strategies, and bolstering the security of the Indo-Pacific region. The COVID-19 outbreak has proven that Taiwan is an indispensable link in global disease prevention. We once again call on the WHO to embrace Taiwan's participation and not allow geographic gaps in global disease prevention efforts. Over half the population in the Indo-Pacific region still do not have the opportunity to use new technologies hindering post-pandemic recovery to help members of the regional community recover together. Taiwan will continue to assist our Indo-Pacific partners to improve infrastructure, share our experience using technology to fight the disease, and help countries use cutting-edge technologies like AI and big data to respond to this constantly changing pandemic. The Indo-Pacific region constitutes 60% of global GDP. If multilateral regional trade mechanisms can be more open and welcome more countries, I'm sure the regional economy will see more dynamic growth post-pandemic. We are very pleased to see that regional economic cooperation mechanisms led by democracies such as the CPTPP and the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework are proving effective. Taiwan will continue to cooperate with like-minded countries and work towards participation in these mechanisms so that we can contribute to global economic revitalization as global industry chains are restructured and become more resilient. At the same time, we are seeing extreme weather events under increase, posing a serious challenge to human survival. Many island nations face rising sea levels and the resulting loss of land. In the face of this crisis, Taiwan will continue to fulfill its responsibility to protect the environment. We are working toward energy transition and upgrading our industries by developing green energy, using more gas and less coal. We are also making progress toward achieving net zero emissions by 2050, playing our part in global climate action to create a better, greener future. Despite China's military provocations and increasing tensions in the Taiwan Strait, our society, under the leadership of President Tsai, has remained calm and rational. People have continued to live their lives as usual, without panic or fear. Our people have come together to tell the world that Taiwan will not bend under pressure from China. We are confident and determined to defend our democracy and freedom. Taiwan is a responsible member of the international community. President Tsai 
has an unwavering commitment to maintain close trade stability and a peaceful Indo-Pacific region. Our door is always wide open for communication with China. As President Tsai has said, our goodwill will not change. Our commitments will not change. We will not revert to the old paths of confrontation. And we were not bowed to pressure. We remained steadfast in our commitment to the principle of peace, parity, democracy, and dialogue in managing close trade relations. Distinguished guests, we will continue to defend Taiwan's free and democratic way of life. And we will stand alongside other peace-loving nations in defending our shared values of freedom, democracy, the rule of law, and respect of human rights. I look forward to a successful dialogue on envisioning Asia and wish you all the best. Thank you.